from Hollywood, it's the Tom Micah Show. You know the seven, don't you, that you can't say on television? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. This from the website of the Arizona Republic newspaper. Anne Hathaway. You know Anne Hathaway, right? She's moved in with her parents. Says here, the Get Smart Actress is sleeping on the sofa in her mother and father's New York home while she looks for somewhere to live. Get smart. That made a few bucks, didn't it? She needs some place to live. Why? Well, she needed some place to live after splitting from her boyfriend, Raffaello Foliari. I think he's Italian, Gary, yes. Says here, a source said, quote, she is okay, but is staying at her parents' New York apartment right now. That really uh, clears it up for us. Says here, the 25-year-old actress previously, previously said she enjoys, quote, a fabulous relationship with her mom and dad. Isn't that what she said about Raffaello? That was fabulous, too. Says here the star split for Raffaello just days before the Italian businessman was charged with federal wire fraud conspiracy and money laundering. <laughs> and you can hear Dean laughing down the hall. Yes. That's why they call those laws the uh, the RICO. Law, because most of the guys who break the law are named Rico. I'm ready to rock. Says here the plush penthouse apartment the couple shared was later searched by the FBI as part of their investigation against Raffaello. Raffaello has pleaded guilty to 14 counts. 14 counts of wire fraud conspiracy and money laundering charges. Anne has reportedly also given police thousands of dollars worth of gifts, including jewelry. Raffaello gave her during their four-year relationship. Uh, can you imagine? I just found out. I had no idea he was doing that. Four years. I had no idea. I, I could hear him talking on the phone in the other room, but I had no idea who he was talking to. you got to be kidding me. Says here, uh, the actress recently revealed she, quote, spent a week in shock following the arrest of her former lover. She said, as soon as I found out about the arrest, I had to get on a plane to Mexico to do a promotional tour for Get Smart. Then I spent a week in shock at a friend's house. And Steve Carell, my Get Smart co-star, stepped up for me during an interview when someone asked me a question about it. He said, at some point you're going to have to talk about this time in your life. You don't have to do it this week. I'll take care of anything that comes your way. Steve Carell stepping up to the plate. Come on. Now, I don't know how you can have a relationship with someone for four years four years and not known they had committed so many crimes. How can you not know? And, 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 and what I really believe is that 
you may not know the specifics of the crimes because you don't want to know how sausage is made, or maybe you don't want to know how jewelry is bought. I have an ex who told me she dated a guy. I mean, uh, she told me good-looking guy, and he was uh, of Italian descent, but that you know shouldn't mean anything, right? But uh, what a guy! He was Italian and um, always wanted to eat at the most expensive places, the most exclusive places. So they have a lunch at the Polo Lounge and places like that. And he always paid with a wad of bills. He had he had cash. Now, by the way, who's paying with cash at the Polo Lounge, which is over at the Beverly Hills Hotel? I've been going to the Polo Lounge for 20 years, and I love it dearly. I have never seen somebody take out a wad of bills, start going, 20, 40, 60. This guy always paid in cash. So when my ex was telling me this story about the guy she used to date, I said, well, what did you do for a living? She said, well, he had some job on the East Coast. I said, on the East Coast? Where? New Jersey. New Jersey. What kind of business was he in? She says, he was in the trucking industry. <laughs> wow. He's Italian. He pays for everything in cash. And he's in the trucking industry in New Jersey. How many more hints do you need? Well, she didn't want to know any more than that because she wanted to keep eating lunch at the Polo Lounge. So she just never questioned it. So here's Anne Hathaway dating this Italian uh, businessman for four years and has no idea he's involved in money laundering and wire fraud conspiracy. All she knows is he has a plush apartment. He's given her a lot of jewelry. No one's ever heard of this guy. He's an Italian businessman. Thousands of dollars of gifts. <laughs> I just, I was in shock. I couldn't believe he did that. So I'm wondering how many of you listening right now have done the very same thing, okay? You got involved with somebody. And you had no idea of the serious criminal activity in which they were engaged. Or worse yet, like my ex, you had an idea they were involved in some criminal activity because you said to yourself things like, how does he pay for this stuff? Or, why doesn't this guy ever go to the office? He just has money. Or, how come I've never met his family? So you got to do a relationship with somebody who is involved in some kind of serious criminal activity. And when you found out, you had absolutely no idea. Maybe you were dating them, or maybe you moved in with them, or maybe you got married to them. Or, or take it the other way, maybe you didn't live with them. Maybe they continued to live in New Jersey working in the trucking industry, and you never saw where they lived. I was convinced this guy not only worked in the trucking industry in New Jersey, I was convinced he had a wife and kids. I was convinced it was like the Sopranos. You know, he had a wife and kids back in New Jersey somewhere. I mean, how many single guys with money choose to live in New Jersey? Unless they're raising kids. It was just a guess on my part. So if you had a long-term relationship with somebody, or you were dating somebody for an extended period of time, and you found out that they were involved in some kind of criminal activity you knew nothing about, call me now. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. Can't get enough of you, man. How are you at work? How are you in the car? When I get out of the car, I bring the radio inside and still listen to you. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. All right. You're in a relationship and you found out with time that the person you're with was involved with criminal activity. Amy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So 
I, um, I'm crossing the bridges here in Long Beach, and I just heard the story, and it reminds me so much of one of my ex-boyfriends. Really? Yes. Um, he, I'm half Italian, and I've always been attracted to Italians, and he is full Italian. Um, started going out, uh, you know, he picked me up in his, uh, brand new expensive Mercedes. Uh, we only had been going out for a week, um, and then it was Easter Sunday. He got me a big Easter basket, and the, there was a stuffed, um, rabbit inside he goes look really close there's a big pair of diamond earrings um he let's see and you thought there was nothing suspicious about that at all i actually i actually showed my parents i went to my parents and i said oh my gosh look what he got me and my mom was like oh my gosh they're beautiful i had to be married like 20 years to get earrings like that and I was a little suspicious. The next week, my car broke down, and instead, oh no, 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 I um, the oil pan or something. There was a hole in it. He said, "I don't want you to drive on that. We're going to get you a new car. Drive my Mercedes. I'll drive my truck." So for two weeks, I'm driving to work in this brand new Mercedes. I've only known him for three weeks. He just and you me to found speak. and you found that not the least bit suspicious. Uh, no, I did. I was, uh... But, was yes, crazy. so you immediately said, no, no, I couldn't be seen driving a brand new Mercedes. And, by the way, take this jewelry back. No, I did not. Right. When I got suspicious and I said, I can't do this anymore, is when I found out in his... He said he worked for the... Uh, helped with people's credits. But on the side, he... Yeah, you help with people's credit. Hey, listen, uh, you got the uh, $40 debt here, and if you don't pay it, I'm going to break your arm. <laughs> on the side, he was doing something with credit cards. The credit card companies haven't caught on yet. And he let me in on this secret, and he said I could get a part of it. And so you stopped dating him immediately. I did. That was when you stopped. Actually... He told me that, and that's when my stomach, my heart just went into my stomach. That's um, when your heart went into your stomach. Yeah. Uh, wearing diamond earrings that your mother said she'd have to be married 30 years to get, or driving a new Mercedes, that, that wasn't the least bit suspicious enough to say, hey, I can't accept this. I, like you said about your ex-girlfriend, I was enjoying it. I was, I was enjoying going to these fancy restaurants where they only have valet parking and being treated like a queen. Oh, yes. And then he told me after three weeks that he put a deposit on a house um, closer to me because he wants to be closer to me. It was just too much. I see. Yeah. And did you uh, ever hear about him after you broke up with him? Did he uh, get uh, prosecuted or caught or anything? Um, uh, all of a sudden, he had to move from Laguna to Corona. All of a sudden, it was a big rush. Um, he, it was just like within a week, he just had to leave. So Laguna I, to Corona, that's a, that's a pretty big step down in lifestyle. I know. So I'm not sure. He might have gotten caught. But we were broken up then. Wow. I just wanted to share my story. I'm glad you did. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Lori on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Good. Um, I was in a relationship for two years. And, gosh, yeah, actually right at the two-year mark, we were uh, going to go see a Bad manner show over at the shoe store, and I got rushed by, I don't know, 10 or so undercover agents. I found out the boyfriend was a car thief. And uh, was there any uh, hint that uh, that's what he was into? He, he had a lot of pretty cars, but I was 21, and, you know, I, I wasn't, I guess, all that well at, with doing math or something, because he was a student, but he had... A beautiful thing. And you didn't Mercedes. think anything was suspicious about him having a big, beautiful Mercedes as a student? <laughs> no, and, uh, and a collection of other beautiful cars. Yeah, you know, I guess I didn't really think much about it. 
you just like the benefit of knowing a guy with big, beautiful cars. Exactly. Until I got arrested, though. Now, that would put the damper on things now, wouldn't it? Yes, and it did. And and what were you charged with? Well, they ended up releasing me, but it was Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto? Yes, yes. Really? Yeah, he was. It was. In, he was involved in a, in a like a, a a car ring, like stealing numerous cars, and they also found like fraudulent credit cards and a gun in the trunk of the car when they did the whole raid. Really? Yeah, it was really embarrassing, right in front of the troubadour, and I never got to see the bad manners play. I'll bet you didn't. <laughs> How'd you explain to mom and dad that you got arrested? You know what? Well, that's like. This would take a whole show. Um, my my parents my parents they dealt with it, but the worst part was they ended up the boyfriend ended up finding out I was married. Oh my god! Yeah. So you were thrilled that uh, you, the guy you were cheating with on the side had big beautiful cars. Yes, I was actually married a good friend of his, and he didn't know about it though. Sounds like sounds like you almost got what was coming to you. Yeah, I think I did. Unbelievable. Yeah. Did your husband find out? Well, yeah. See, the thing was, we just got married and in Vegas, and then you know, kind of the when they sobered up, it was just like, well, it's better just not to mention anything because he was friends with the boyfriend. So we didn't mention anything, and, and and we were married probably about five months or so. But when when I got arrested, and you know, I had to give the the my real current last name and that sort of thing, it ended up coming out that I was mar I married his friend a few months back. Ooh boy! So what'd the husband do with you? Um. Well, <laughs> that's a whole other story. It ended up the husband we got divorced, and then he remarried. Here's a this is a great story. He remarried. And then I guess that he caught his wife cheating on him, and he went and shanked the guy 18 times. I guess the guy lived, but now the ex-husband's <laughs> both in prison. Well, you picked him, dear. I know, I know. Really, really bad choice in men. You have horrible choice in men. I know. Well, no, I'm doing much better now. Think of all the nice guys out there saying, I can't meet a nice girl. <laughs> you know, my le the lesson I learned is... Um, not to like f look at look for a man for the money, not to f not to pick a man because of their pocketbook or what I think they may have. That's what most women do. Yes, I know. Now the the latest husband and it's lasted the longest. I, I picked for humor. How long is that? Two and a half years. Six years. Six whole years. Yeah. Wow. That's a, you know what that is a, that's a record for me and it's because I knew he was broke when I married him. And you know, as I say in the funny. TV business, you've been together long enough to go into syndication. <laughs> well, it's working out. I haven't been arrested since I married him. Not yet. And I haven't married, and I haven't married any of his friends, so we're doing pretty good. We'll find out what he does. Which one? Your current husband. Oh, I can't give you that information. That'd be way too much, and he'd strangle me for. No, I'm, I'm not saying you should tell me what he does for a living. You probably don't know what he really does. Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he. Yeah, I know what he's doing now. How can you be sure? Well, I see the bank statements, and we don't live that large. I would hope that if he was doing something illegal, we'd probably um, live in a bigger house and all that kind of stuff. I wonder how he feels. Though you've been with guys who were able to buy you more things, and and you fell for them. I don't know. I don't think I really think he puts much thought into it. Maybe he should. I don't know, perhaps you should, but I think it was kind of a dead subject. Well, you hope it's a dead subject. Pardon me? You hope it stays a dead subject. And, and I think it will. It's all water under the bridge now. That's what they always say. Let's just move forward. You know, let's not talk about the past. Let's, let's continue moving forward. Wowee. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. So there you got involved with somebody and you had no idea what kind of criminal behavior they were into. Ruben on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how are you, buddy? I'm doing okay, Ruben. Yeah, nice. So um, years ago I had just got out of the, out of the service, you know, and, uh, you know, I started bartending at a place and I met this girl and she, she we had kind of a, a rocky, uh, tumultuous relationship right away. And so we go to her house, you know, and 
we'd be sitting there watching a movie or something, and, and, and you know, the phone would ring, and she'd be like, don't answer it. I'd be like, okay. And then uh, someone would come to the door, and she'd be like, hide. And I'd be like, what? Hide? Why? And yeah, I, was, I guess I was pretty naive at the time. You know, I grew up in a small town, and then went to the Army. And so, you know, I, I felt like I, I didn't know a whole lot about things. And I never heard of, uh, you know, certain things like a, a grow house. Well, she had this door. Uh, in her hallway. Don't you like, watch weeds? <laughs> yeah, so I, I, find, I, I guess I gave it away too soon, but I started uh, getting curious about her house, and I was like, well, what's in this door? She was like, no, no, no. <laughs> and I was like, finally I made her, like, after, like, two months, you know, uh, tell me what was in that door. And she takes me down in her basement, and she's got this freaking, it's like day, it's like a hot summer day, and there's all these freaking weed plants, man. She's got, like, 200 plants. And it's like, I was just like, oh, my eyes just lit up because, you know, I mean, I like to dabble occasionally back then. But, oh, my God, she had a huge operation going on with the big kingdom lights. It was incredible. Wow. But she lived this whole, like, you know, because I should have known because, you know, I, I, would, I would see her or whatever, and I'd be like, so what do you do? She goes, oh, I'm a buyer for a sporting goods store. I'm like, oh, okay. But she never worked, you know, and she was driving on a Mustang 5.0 GT with the T roofs. And meanwhile, she got like mountain bikes and all this stuff. So, but I didn't put two and two together until I finally got to go downstairs and see that, you know, that, uh, that big grow room. Pretty, uh, pretty incredible. Well, I guess it was. Did she ever get caught? Well, you know, I made her quit. We dated for so long that, I mean, she was, we couldn't even live a, a regular life because she was always so scared. Uh, but so I made her, you know, move out and stop that house. But the guy that had set it up for her, he ended up getting busted really bad. So. Unbelievable. Ruben, thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jamie, on the Tom Like His Show, hello. How's it going? Great. How are you? Great. Actually. <laughs> it's going great. I am great. I'm feeling great. Great. I am great. <laughs> um, so my story is I worked with um, somebody who was a senior manager for a local car dealer. And every four years, they send, they send all of their senior managers on what's called the big gig. It's basically a cruise, a reward for the senior managers and their spouses. And so we took off for a cruise to the Bahamas, five days, awesome, mingling with everybody, networking. We get back, and it turns out that while we were gone, um, my 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 uh, spouse was under investigation. So you, you were married. I'm, I say spouse. We were we were engaged to be married. So you I, you didn't have a spouse. No, not a spouse. But we were engaged, and I just you know you, you had know. some guy living in your place. We had a place together. We did. We had a house in Fullerton. Um, I had just finished college. We were having fun. So we get back, and it turns out that all of our customers cash down payments weren't being applied properly to the finance companies. While we were gone, they had found out that they were all embezzled. $130,000 worth of cash, car payments, cash um, vehicle down payments, anything that you could pay in cash service, service receipts, everything, $130,000 worth. And the reason why it wasn't discovered, you know, through just regular daily transactions was because he was the senior business office manager of that store. All the problems, discrepancies, everything went to him. And after him, there was really nobody else to, to go through it, except, you know, maybe every quarter the regional would come down and analyze. But other than that, I mean, he was just getting away with it, gambling it. It was a gambling addiction of all things. Wow. His reason, though, can I share, was apparently his parents were saving up money to move back to their their native land, and he had stolen it. So his reasoning for embezzling this money was, well, I felt bad that I stole that money from my parents. So um, I stole it from this establishment, gambled it in the hopes of winning more money so I could pay my parents back. Mm -hmm. when, I thought, when I thought a normal thief would just steal the money and directly pay his parents back, no, he, he was gambling it in the hopes to win more to pay his parents back so they could retire happily was his reason and so you married him no absolutely not absolutely not did not marry him i'm happily married now i have twins i'm a teacher it's, it's so all you told him it was over absolutely and you know the hardest part was just i think because he thought his reason was so good-hearted and with so much good intent that he thought that i i was the crazy one for not wanting to be with him anymore 
how can you how can you be mad at me? How can you be upset? I was I'm trying to do good for my family and and help my parents retire happily. And I don't I don't understand why why you're like that. And I'm thinking, dude, you're crazy. Peace out. <laughs> That was, it was, uh, I can't even explain to you what it did to my family and my, I just graduated from college. I was ready to start my life as a teacher and then this crazy event happened. It was outrageous. You picked him, darling. I know. You know what? Unfortunately, I have to admit, but that's all done and over with now. I just wanted to share. I'm glad you did, Jamie. Thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Randy on the Tom Likas show just past half past the hour. Hello, Randy. Yes. How are you tonight? Good. Um, well, I started dating this guy, and he told me that he worked at a skate shop making skate wheels. So I thought, okay, you know, no big deal. I was, at the time, I was a stripper. So I had my own life. I was making my own money, had a house. I was doing what I was doing. And he came over, and I he told him, He said he did what? <laughs> I was a stripper, and he said that he worked at a skate shop. A skate shop? Doing what? Um, making wheels for skateboards and roller skates and those um, razor scooters. Now, darling, let me ask you a question. Um, all right, you're a stripper. I, if it, do you really think that's a top-notch occupation, making wheels for skates? No, I don't. But I, I happened to know the place where he did work at, and I went to pick him up a couple times. And I was like, okay, you know, he has a job. That was number one. He That's all you cared about, he had a job. Yeah, because I just got out of a bad marriage, and I was the one working. So I was like, okay, I finally found one who at least has a job. Well, Adolf Hitler had a job, too, so what? Yeah, I, I, I thought it was okay, you know. He worked during the day, I worked during the night. We had a couple hours here and there. And I happened to um, lose my car, wanted to get a new one, and he gave me the down payment for it. How do you lose your car? I kind of rolled it down Rubidoux Mountain. Why'd you do that? Because I was playing in the mud and I was a little intoxicated. So you're a stripper and you got intoxicated and you get in the mud and you rolled your car down a hill. Yeah, my truck. Your truck and lost it. Yeah, it was a little bit beyond repair, so... The trailer park you live in, where's that located again? <laughs> Not anymore. Now I live in the ghetto. I, I moved out from the oh, trailer park to the ghetto. you're moving on up to the east side, huh? <laughs> exactly. I see. You know, and um, come to find out, I noticed he was acting a little weird one day, and I, I told him what was up, and he's like, oh, you know, I just I snorted a line. I was like, you know, no big deal. I've been around it. I was a stripper. I've tried it. And so I tried it with him, and lo and behold, you know, I get hooked on it, and I find out he gets fired from his job. I still have a new truck. Um, he made a couple payments on my house for me, and I opened up his little dresser one day, and there's just a crap load of methamphetamine. Right. So, and by the time I decided that I didn't want to do that anymore and I went into rehab, I was four weeks pregnant and I got busted driving <sighs> his car. So. Mm -hmm. So you got what you deserved. Uh, I did. I did. I really got what I deserved. I went to jail for eight months of my pregnancy. And I and got then you had a kid. Yes. Who has to live with you. Yes, I have a beautiful son who's almost four now who will not know his dad because his dad happened to get busted for 118 grams of methamphetamine and has been in prison all his life. That's just great. Yeah, I You must be proud. Out. Actually, I, I'm proud that I got out of it because now I'm a drug and alcohol counselor and I realized how stupid I was to believe the BS story that he gave me and think that everything was okay. So a good situation came out of a bad one. Because now I have a beautiful son. I'm a drug and alcohol counselor. I don't do drugs anymore. And I happen... How much does that gig pay? Um, I bring in about $1,000 every two weeks. That's... It, it's not a lot, but it's fulfilling because I'm actually helping people get out of the situations I put myself in. Oh, boy, you're killing me here. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. When you're alone, you wake up, you've got a hundred different things you can do in one day, right? When you're in a relationship, you have one thing. 
what she wants to do. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. I am the aforementioned. 1-800-5-800-TALK. So there you are in a long-term relationship like actress Anne Hathaway. And after a long period of time dating somebody, you just can't believe it when you find out the illegal activity they've been involved in. Here's Don on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Don here from your favorite city, Portland, Portland, Oregon. Oregon home of the other right. white meat. Is your sister named Palmolive by any chance? <laughs> Love it. Hey, I was uh, selling advertising for a local company and just scored this huge sale. I was all excited. The owner um, ran a auto body repair shop. And, um, you know, we got along pretty well. We're dating for a while. Everything's going well. And then I happen to Google him and find out he is a two-time convicted armed bank robber that just got out of prison six months prior to meeting me. So I confront him, and, you know, he dishes the dirt, and that's all fine and good. And he's clean now, and everything's going well. Well, I start to find syringes in his bedroom. I'm like, what the hell are these? Oh, these are for my mom's insulin. Okay. So... He he's out running errands. I'm at his house, and, uh, of course, you know, being a woman, of course I'm going to ransack the place, and I find this little um, black thing that looks like, I don't know anything really about drugs, but um, he also used to deal in heroin, so it was uh, pretty exciting. Really? How did you yeah. figure that out by looking around the house? Well, he had, I confronted him, and he told me that he used to also deal heroin. Used to, past tense. Really? Right. Uh-huh. So, you know, you just put uh, two and two together, and there you have it. Wow. And then he uh, just told you, and that was that? Yeah, pretty much. He's in jail now, so. so. Yeah. Mm. And there were no signs of this? No, not really. He was pretty, you know, on the up and up. Pretty legit. No, he wasn't on the up and up. He was on the up and up when you searched his house. Right. Other than that, there were no other signs. Hmm. So uh, you broke up with him at that point? No, I had to break up with him um, because he got hauled off to jail. Really? So you kept going out with him until then? Exactly. And what was uh, the reason in your mind? Why were you continuing to date somebody like that? I was, I was afraid of him. He was psychotic. So you continued to date? Were you having sex with this guy? Yes, every now and then, you know. Really? Yeah. Once you knew this about him, how was it? Oh, I was pretty disgusted and wanted to break it off, but I was also afraid of him. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. So there you were having sex with this guy. Let me understand. You're having sex with this guy, but you knew he was uh, a convicted heroin dealer. Right. After that, I think I only had sex with him about once, and he whined and sniveled and complained. And I'm like, well, you know, that's just the way it is. Unbelievable. Don, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Jason on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm Okay. Good, good. Great to talk to you. First time caller. Sure it is. I uh, was dating my I'm a high school sweetheart. I was uh, together for about three and a half years, and her dad came home one day. They lived in a regular neighborhood, Irvine area, and her dad came home one day. He was working in a car dealership, had a great job, and had a bad commute. He came home and just said, I quit. I'm done working. He was about 40 years old, and he always had a big wad of cash, and I was always wondering what was up with it. <laughs> But, you know, I didn't know how he could just quit. And he says, well, you don't know about the video business? What are you talking about? And it turns out he's the adult video company uh, down out here in Orange County. And it turns out he runs the kind of adult side of the, uh, kind of the, the mob uh, and makes you know, multi-million dollar, went and bought, bought himself a couple million dollar homes, 
uh, all this stuff, and then his, girl, or his daughter and I end up getting a divorce. He's kind of getting groomed for the business, and uh, his daughter and I end up getting a divorce, and we parted ways, and he kind of sat me down and said, you, have, you know who I am? You have no idea who I am. And he started threatening me with a bunch of different things, and uh, he basically told me he had nothing but money and time on his hands, and he made sure that I have nothing if uh, I didn't kind of accept their offer and go on about my life. And so I did. Now I'm uh, at least alive to, to, to tell you guys about it. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. So uh, how did you leave her? Uh, kind of bad. It was She was she was pregnant. I, I met somebody else in the middle of, uh, you know, we were trying to get separated before, and we uh, ended up having a kid together. He's, He's awesome, and we're amicable, but we, you know, I had to get end up getting a divorce in the middle of her being pregnant, and an unhappy uh, father of the mob <laughs> made, it, made it pretty stressful. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's, uh, uh, you know, he ended up getting caught himself. He threatened me, he said, you never get caught, you never say you did it, you know, and I said, I, you know, I, I was caught red-handed, I knew I was going to be caught, so... Uh, you know, I thought I was going to live my life miserable with a wife that looked at me and hated me. So, I uh, we, we split ways, and it actually was the best thing I ever, best thing we ever did. Um, we we actually get along now. Um, it's been for a couple of years. We got a five year old son, and, and uh, her dad now is, you know, he's nice to me now, but he got caught himself. <laughs> oh, I'll bet. Yeah, just an amazing story. And uh, how did she explain never having told you about that? I just, it was a regular family. You would never notice that that was the type of business they were in. We'd golf, and you know, I'd go golfing with him all the time. He was actually one of my best friends. And then, uh, you know, he'd explain to people, people would ask him what he did because he was young and the country club lifestyle and a lot of cash. And they always say it was in the audio video business, which <laughs> was always, always made me laugh once I figured out what it was. Or once I was told what it was. Um, you know, but. To this day, and nobody, I mean, in his neighborhood, nobody knows what he does or who he is. And, uh, you know, uh, he carries in suitcases full of cash every week. It's outrageous. It is outrageous. Quite amazing, Jason. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to um, hmm, Danny on the Tom Likas show. Danny. Yes. How's it going? Same as seven seconds ago. <laughs> Short time listener, first time caller. Um, dating a stripper for about three months. First mistake. But it was cool. She didn't move in. It was buying me things. Uh, three months later, my buddies went to a strip, same strip club. Wound out here and he got a happy ending for additional price for private dance. Turns out it's the chick I'm dating, so <laughs> hung out, got some more stuff out of her, and left after that. Oh, my God. So did you ask her, why didn't you tell me this, or why do I have to find this out now? What did you ask? Um, once I figured out it was her, I asked her. She denied it, but, I mean, she's a stripper hooker, so. <laughs> stripper hooker. Exactly. Two very different professions. Not really. Well, in one, uh, uh, you actually give something for what they paid, and for the other, you don't. I guess you're right. I mean, a stripper is a hooker who uh, doesn't give you anything for your money. It gets excited. <laughs> yeah, but what good is that? You can get that out of a magazine. Yeah, you're right. Right? Yeah, she's getting bad though, so getting me happy for the three months I was around. Well, yeah, hope it was worth what you had to pay for it. I didn't pay anything. She bought me a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, well, thank you so much for that. I appreciate it, Danny. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Hunter on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Hunter. Yeah, uh, got out of high school a year ago. I don't 
believe in relationships. I'm a like 101. Uh, I was hooking up with this girl for about a week. We we're going to go out to a party, so she said she was going to meet me there, and uh, never showed up. Next thing I heard, she was uh, locked up in jail, got a DUI. Really? Really. Wow. And uh, you had no idea? No, I, I was just waiting around at the party, trying to call her, no answer. Then uh, later that night, she ended up calling me. And what, she wanted you to help her? Yeah, and I said, uh, no way. <laughs> like, you know, I'm a Lagos 101, get it straight. Yeah, exactly. Why would you want anything to do with that? Exactly. Mm, so, absolutely. Yeah, can, can you take me out with a uh, bong rip and a Snoop Dogg? All right, here it comes. Biatch! It's 1-800-5800-TOM. I have less than a minute, and I guarantee you when I take this call, they're going to take as long as they possibly can telling the story. Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mark. I have one hell of a story. I'll cut it short. I ended up dating a girl who was connected to the... Her family was in the Russian mafia. It was... I, we were dating for about six months before we moved in. And uh, we moved into the apartment, and their family shows up with a, a moving truck full of uh, all of this furniture for us, including um, six laptops that her dad was like, oh, I'm sure you can use these. Anytime somebody personally owns six laptops, I'm suspicious. The Tom Likas Show.